You guys ready to have your minds blown today? You sure? Let's load this Henry. Oh, look at that. A side loading gate on a Henry. The world may never be the same again. Let's take out some soda pops. I can't count either. All right, we got some uh, milk down there. Now those were some uh, HSM cowboy loads moving at $14.99 yielding about 1,200 foot-pounds of energy. Let's up the ante, shall we? Let's get into buffalo bore territory. This is uh, leaving the barrel at 1970, yielding 2,200 foot-pounds of energy. Yeehaw, buddy, this stuff's getting down. We're gonna talk a little bit more as we go here, but this is a new rifle for Henry. This one's chambered in 3855. This is a relatively new cartridge for them to bring to the table with this rifle. We'll talk a little bit more as we go, but, uh, Let's load it. And look, it'll still load from the front if you want. So it still has a, st a standard loading tube like you would see on any other Henry, but now they've added a rear loading option. Well, we got three, three gallons of milk and three buffalo bore rounds. I think you can see where this is going. Let's do it. These kick a little harder. Here we go. Yeah, look at that last one. <laughs> Woo, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Now, look, guys, I drink a lot of milk. That really hurt me to see all that milk go to waste. But don't worry, I will drink plenty of milk to replace it. So, uh, in case you can't tell, Henry's making a side loading uh, rifle now. They're doing the brass receivers in 3030 and 3855. Uh, this one has a set of beautiful walnut furniture with some beautiful factory laser checkering on there. Very nice touch for this particular rifle. You can see we've got some sling studs on here with a Montana rifle, uh, Montana Sling Company rifle sling on here. This is a uh, Leopold one and a half to four uh, VX Freedom, just a like $200 optic we picked up. It's setting in a set of tally rings and uh, yeah. It's a really, really cool rifle, really slick, smooth action. And one thing that I initially noticed on this when we were uh, playing around with it, I'm going to go ahead and load it again, is that the loading gate itself on this is really, really smooth. I've, I've noticed on, you know, and, and look, guys, I'm not trying to talk trash on Marlin, okay? That's not fair to talk trash about Marlin because, you know, Marlin had their side loading, uh, you know, gate for a long time. But I noticed on some of the more recent Marlins, and we, we bought them, guys. I mean, we, we have, a, I know Chad has a 4570. The loading gate on that particular rifle was a little sharp around the edges, and you have to go in there and kind of clean up some of those sharp edges. But I noticed on this one, it is just really nice and smooth in there. No sharp edges, which is great. Um, so the 3855 that we're playing with is actually an old Ballard cartridge. Uh, Ballard rifles were the old single shot rifles uh, from back in the day. They were highly accurate target rifles. And the 3855 is making a big comeback in the cowboy action and, and uh, you know, shooting uh, disciplines and everything like that. A lot of people are preferring the 3855 over 3030 for the cowboy action stuff because at long range, in order for a hit to count, a steel plate has to get hit and then physically fall down. And where 3030 pales in comparison is on long range performance in terms of that kinetic energy knocking down those plates at some of the longer ranges. Um, the nominal bullet weight uh, for this particular cartridge is about a 250 grain bullet. So you're already trumping 3030 in bullet weight by several grains, whereby a heavy in a 3030s is going to get up in about 170 grain range, with most of your hunting uh, rounds being about 150 grains. So you're trumping the weight on a 3030 by a good bit. The parent case for 3030 and for 32 Special is the 3855 Ballard case. I actually didn't know that. I did some research and then, and then ended up finding out that this is the parent case for those cartridges. So the 3855 uh, has been doing it a little bit longer than the 3030 and the 32 Special. 
The 3855, as the name suggests, the original black powder loading for this would have been a 38 projectile on 55 grains of black powder. Okay. Now the older, you know, Ballard target rifles um, offered slightly more anemic velocities. When this uh, cartridge is loaded to full modern potential, it can yield some pretty powerful results. Results that I would say are really more comparable to 35 Remington uh, bullet weight for bullet weight. In fact, when you compare the Buffalo bore uh, ammunition in a 35 Remington to the 3855, you actually wind out uh, wind up finding out um, that the the energies are very very similar pit for pat. Um, you know, the 35 Remington nominally uses a slightly lighter projectile, so this is a relatively soft recoiling, but heavy projectile round, which gives some good downrange performance for your cowboy action types. But I can also see this as being a really awesome hunting round for somebody that wants a lever action, but maybe they don't want to go with a 32 Special or with a 3030. Maybe they want to go with a heavier bullet, but they don't want to get into 4570 or 444 Marlin territory. And I have to say, um, we've got a 336, and, uh, and that particular rifle is chambered in 35 Remington. And I have to say, this is smoother shooting than the 35 Remington. Um, and, and guys, don't get me wrong, 35 Remington's an awesome cartridge. I really love it, but this one is just way smoother shooting. Missed. Look at that. Real fast to, to work, fast to cycle. Very smooth bolt on that. Um, we are gonna take this gun out to a little bit longer ranges. I'm just gonna play around with some of the steel here. Okay. Now, um, another point that I wanna sort of make about this, especially from just, let's just say, a strictly engineering perspective. Henry decided to keep the same tube loading feature that they've always had. Now, in case you guys don't know, if this is the first video of ours that you've ever seen where we use a Henry, Henry's traditionally are loaded from the front just like any other tubular fed uh, gun that they make, such as their 22s and things like that. This is a very recent addition. This is brand new for them to use a side loading gate. And like I said, they're only doing 3855 and 3030 at the time of this video being made. Um, the cool thing about that is let's say you have, let's just say, there might be a stoppage or a malfunction or an issue or something you need to clear. With a Marlin, you have to take the whole trigger group out to get the bolt out so you can clear the stoppage out of the magazine. Okay, you can't, it's not easy to get to the magazine assembly on a Marlin. On this, if you have an issue, you just pull it from the front and in two seconds you're good. Now from a hunting perspective, let's say you're in a, in a stand or something, you want to load your gun, it's a lot less cumbersome to be able to just sit there with the gun at the low and ready and load it okay that's one of the big big features of the rear loading gate is the ability to load it silently and with few moving parts listen that's pretty quiet instead of having to fumble with the tube that's it for hunting purposes that's nice to be able to load it okay uh, silently and from the low and ready position now if you're just at the range having fun you can pop the front uh, of the, the tube and they will load pretty quick just dropping them in there. But I know some shooters have complained about the tube loading feature and wanting a rear loading feature. This is a very requested feature that people have asked for in Henry. And uh, guys, Henry, they really care about their customers and they've done a lot of listening to you guys in terms of giving you what you want. People requested it. They didn't want to do it. I, I can't tell you how many times I had the conversation with Anthony. He's like, yeah, you know, we'll probably never do a, a, a rear loading gun they finally did it because they care about giving you guys what you want. And I, I think that's cool of them to do that and, and to listen to people. So uh, the big major difference over some of the previous Henry's we've shot is the checkered fore end and stock. The checkering is very different than anything they've ever done. The rear loading gate is very different, obviously, because it's the first time they've offered it. And 3855 is a relatively new chambering for them. So we thought we'd knock all those things out in one video. I'm going to shoot a little bit more here, have a little fun on the steel. We're going to take it out to a few hundred yards, maybe even out to 300 yards, shoot a little bit more. 
This gun holds six, by the way. Oh yeah. Everything up close is gonna be child's play for this rifle. Um, I will say energy wise, when you start looking at foot pounds of energy and, and recoil forces, let's just say the physical force that this gun puts on you in terms of recoil energy, um, it's gonna be very similar to like a 243 and about a seven or eight pound rifle. Uh, okay, so it's really not a bad rifle to shoot. You know, even though you are getting some ballistic advantage, especially when you start running the Buffalo bore in it and some of the hotter loads, um, it really does not kick that bad. It does not have that tremendous thump that you're gonna see in a 4570. Uh, 4570 is great and big bore is awesome. I really love 4570, but if you can't handle the recoil, this is a great way to get into a soft recoiling big bore that still gives you some great ballistic advantage and still gives you a lot of potential, not only in the woods, in the field, but also if you're a cowboy action guy, this can give you the edge you might need to get the, if you have a grazing hit or a softer hit, or maybe not a good center mass hit at longer range like you wanted, you're gonna have a lot better chance of knocking that plate down with something like the 3855 over 3030. But if you're a 3030 person, they also make this gun in 3030, so either way, you're in good shape. Let's go up the hill. We're gonna take a few shots at long range because I have a feeling that this thing is gonna really ring the steel at some distance. Uh, let's give it a try. All right, guys, we're gonna take some shots with the Henry here from the top of the hill uh, on out to about 300 yards in some cases here. And I wanna make a quick point about this uh, Buffalo bore ammunition. This ammunition is not safe to shoot through the older Ballard rifles. So if you encounter a 3855 antique rifle Always assume that low pressure ammo or black powder equivalent is in order. Do not try stuffing these rounds into an antique rifle. Uh, these Buffalo bore rounds are only intended for modern actions and they will physically damage older guns. So just keep that in mind. It has to be a modern gun in good working condition. Uh, I thought I would mention that. So again, just real quick on this Buffalo bore, it's a 255 grain jacketed soft point moving at and we chronoed it out of this exact rifle moving at 1970 feet per second. The advertised velocity is 1950, so it got about 20 feet per second more velocity out of this barrel uh, than what the advertised speed was. And that's yielding 2198 foot-pounds of energy. And I haven't done the math, but I would figure at about 100, 150 yards, you're probably still putting about 1600 foot-pounds of energy on the target with this round. So. For hunting purposes, I could see this as being a really, really interesting um, setup for some of you who want to hunt with this type of a rifle. Um, we're going to punch out to some extended ranges, and we're going to use buffalo bore because it shoots the flattest. We don't have to worry about so much trajectory in this optic. This is just a one and a half to four Louis, uh, so it's not made for shooting long range, but we're just going to do it anyway. And this choker is loud, so I'm going to don some ear pro. Really nice uh, fit and finish on the stock. The uh, butt, butt plate is uh, fitted really nicely. They did a really good job on the stock. Not only fit and finish, but the laser checkering looks really nice. All right, let's uh, pop a few rounds in. I'm gonna, uh, what do you want me to do, Chad? 100 first? Yeah, just walk out. Yeah, okay. Wow, that thing has some recoil. Oh, that's from the bench. Yeah, you went right over the head. Okay, so yeah, it's it's definitely dialed in high. Okay. Yeah, I was aiming at the middle of the plate, so I guess where we have this thing zeroed, uh, it might be a little off at 100. Yeah, um, just aim at the bottom of the plate. All right, let's give it a try. I'm telling you guys, this ammo is very, very hot stuff. Well, remember, we zeroed it for the uh, lower power Black Hills. Too. Okay, that, that makes sense. Okay. This ammo is no joke. All right, that's a good shot there. Going down to two. Two hundo. Yep. I guess just uh, keep the same point of aim at the bottom of the plate. I am. We'll see if we hit uh, how far away from the head we hit. Yep. You got it. Send it. Oh, no, you put a big old hole right through the railroad tie. Oh, it's that high, huh? Oh, man. I'll be... Yeah, this is an abnormally powerful <laughs> powerful load. 
Um, the pressures that this cartridge generates are getting on up into like the 36, 38,000 PSI, which is definitely getting on up there. Um, I believe the nominal pressures for 3855 are somewhere in the 28 to 30 range. So it's, it's not a high pressure cartridge. Um, this is kind of known uh, amongst a lot of people as being sort of a, a smooth recoiling big bore, if you could put it that way. I don't know if any of you guys have ever shot like a 375 Winchester. Um, shooting this Buffalo bore reminds me of 375 Winchester on the top end in terms of uh, power. It reminds me of 35 Remington. Okay. And right over the head. Okay. So it's safe to say that because our zero is for the, uh, the cowboy loads that the gun's just shooting a little high. Let's see if we can um, lob some in at 300. And I want to hear this uh, round hit the gong out to three. I mean, heck, aim at the bottom of it again and, I mean, see where it goes. Okay. Big plate, right? Yep. Okay. I'm just going to aim right at the bottom. All right, send it. Just above center. All right, I'm going to shoot a group. Well, that thing smacks that steel, too. Yes, it does. A lot of energy. You can't cheat physics, guys, you know? This is a really cool cartridge and um, I'm really hoping that at some point we can do some reloading for this thing and you know either replicate the buffalo bore or exceed the buffalo bore. <laughs> I like exceeding. Yeah and the next time we do a brush gun video we need to test this one too. Sounds good. Sounds like a good excuse. We got fall coming up before terribly long. Be right around the corner. I saw that. Right, I'm gonna try again. I know one thing. If you're gonna shoot long range with this thing, um, it is certainly worth noting that you want to stick with the higher power stuff because it shoots a lot flatter and it hits really hard when it gets down range. Um, you could totally take a take a shot at a game animal with this gun inside of 200 yards, no problem. Just get it dialed in. But it looks like 300 is doable as well. Shot down there. Man, I think it's just a matter of uh, finding a consistent hold, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we aren't really dialed. We're just sort of holding, but that's okay. I'm going to use the same uh, point of aim for this next one. Yep, just Man. <laughs> okay, one more shot. How about the uh, the coyote over there? See Be if we can hit him. I will say, um, shooting this gun standing up offhand is not a big deal, but from the bench, these buffalo boar rounds, uh, they uh, <clears throat> have a little bit of thump. Okay. I'm going to try the uh, coyote. It goes Seven. nothing. Right over the... Just uh, past his head there. It looked like on the right. Yep. Saw that. Yeah, when it comes to uh, scoping these, these rifles, uh, we ended up running a set of tally rings here, which is definitely not a problem. Uh, this one and a half to four is a great, like, kind of brush gun, close-in, 100-yard food plot gun optic is what we were kind of going for here. Um, I think uh, the four power is maybe just a little bit lack, lackluster in terms of, you know, getting out to the top end ranges that this gun is probably capable of. Um, we'll probably do some more work with it. I want to do the um, revisit the brush gun video and maybe try this thing out in some thick stuff and see how it bunks the brush. I mean, that heavy projectile um, with its uh, relatively sedate but still energy producing speeds. Uh, we're really punched through small brush and twigs really well. So I could see this as being a great field rifle um, for taking into the woods and going after deer, um, heck, even bears. 
uh, I would not have a, a problem at all taking one of those buffalo boar rounds and making a 50, 60, 100 yard shot on a bear. No problem. Uh, I think it would kill a bear, no problem. It would kill, obviously, a, a deer sized uh, animal. You start getting into elk and some of the larger animals, quite possibly, okay? As the thing is, guys, you gotta remember, you've got a, a big projectile that's still got some good speed behind it and it's got good penetrating capabilities. When you start getting into a projectile that's heavier, especially once it gets over 200 grains, when you can get that 200 plus grain bullet moving at some good speeds, kind of like when you start looking at 35 Remington, when you're talking, talking a 200 to 220 grain bullet, some of the 35 Remington getting up into the 250. I mean, this is a 255 and it's loaded really, really hot for a modern action. So um, you're getting some really interesting performance out of that cartridge. Uh, we'll probably do some work with the 3030 version as well. Um, we've done 3030s on the channel already. We wanted to do the 3850 first because um, this is a cartridge that I haven't dealt with a ton and I thought it'd be something neat. And also finding out that the 3855 is the parent case for 32 and 3030 was pretty interesting information as well. Um, you know, maybe at some point we'll have to get an old Ballard rifle out here and have a little bit of fun with an original uh, 38 caliber Ballard. Might be something fun. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. We really appreciate it. My shoulder is glad this one's over because <laughs> those, those buffalo boars are taxing from the bench. But offhand, uh, they're not too bad. Definitely want to thank you guys for hanging out today. All of our Patreon supporters, thank you all so very much for your donations each month. Those of you who purchase man cans, thank you so much for purchasing man cans. If you purchase shirts and merchandise over on the website, all of the funds we earn off anything we get from you guys goes right back into producing the channel, producing content, and we thank you all very much for your support. Uh, thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Many more on the way. I'm going to go get a, an adjustment now at the chiropractor. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>